It's been uh, quite a while since my last video. A lot of things changed, uh, including the country where I'm staying right now. I decided to come back to Belarus, where I am right now. It's been like uh, over two weeks already. So enough time to get acclimatized, so as to say. And uh, last time I was here was quite a long time ago, was like over one and a half years ago. Uh, yeah, I left like in February 2022 to Argentina, then Brazil, then Vietnam, then back to Brazil again, and you know, the whole story. So yeah, and um, I want to share like, uh, because a lot of people like both in the country and outside of the country that also left to Georgia or Mexico and some other places, they kind of ask me, so how it is, how is it, how is it back home? Like, because you know, apparently they're reading and they're watching a lot of news and um, yeah, especially for Belarus, they got like crazy ideas that, I don't know, there's like firing squads on every square and uh, they're just shooting uh, the opposition leaders and blah, 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 like that. And, uh, you know, people got, you know, stopped and uh, asked to show their phones, and which never happened to me. So, yeah, I just want to share how, how it feels back home after quite a long break being out of here. And, uh, yeah, so, like, the first thing I noticed uh, when we were approaching my hometown on the bus was, like, well, quite a lot of new buildings built, um, yeah, a lot of new ap apartments and stuff, and uh, I, I kind of noticed that, and uh, the apartments looking pretty pretty modern, I would say, yeah, because, uh, yeah, obviously Belarus is kind of like a socialist type of state, ex-USSR, and uh, and so on, but, uh, so yeah, we, we have like the, the government funded construction company, like the main one, the monopoly for the whole the whole city, the whole town I'm staying in, and they, they are building most most of the apartment blocks here. So yeah, they've been doing pretty good recently. I noticed quite a lot of new houses built and it couldn't be, couldn't be disappointing, right? Uh, considering the time and uh, the people still living in, in the present moment, yeah. I mean, there's war raging like just 1,000 kilometers away from, from Belarus, but still people living in now, they, they're building stuff, they're creating things, they, they're not hopeless, they're not desperate. And that, that's kind of good good spirit, so that, that's what I noticed. Another thing, like uh, I came here, it was the end of May, and uh, everything was green, like the, uh, I don't know, a lot of greenery. I came from Brazil, from the favela in Brazil, and I've been living, you know, right next to the tropic bush, or tropic forest, you know, on the mountain. But still, it was quite like shockingly green, like the 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 abundance, the lush of of nature here in in late spring, and yeah, that kind of shocked me in in a good way. And uh, when you go into the into the yards, you know, inside the yards, there's like there's like a forest uh, inside of each yard, yeah, because because of a lot of trees, a lot of nature, a lot of greenery, and yeah, that kind of that was kind of good impression as well. Then, uh, like back in Brazil, I, I don't know if I told you that, but I was trying to live on like five dollars a day when it comes to my food and groceries and stuff. Yeah, so, so what 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 could potentially five dollars a day buy me back in Brazil? It was like um, one portion of uh, spaghetti and lentils a day, then uh, a sandwich with a very thin slice of some sort of uh, sausage. I don't even know. Yeah, like mostly soy. Sort of bean sausage, I would say, yeah, with a, like 5% of meat. Then a very thin slice of cheese and uh, and a boiled egg and uh, some snacks and uh, a pair of bananas and uh, like one-fifth of coconut. So that was my like daily, um, daily shopping and daily diet. Uh, that's what, that was $5 a day can buy you back in Brazil. But here... I'm like spending two dollars a day on my snacks. Well, okay, like if if I want to buy some like rice and things for the, for the lunch and for dinner, yeah, that's probably gonna cost me one dollar more a day. But still, it's like two or three, two to three dollars. So one hundred dollars can can feed you a month easily. And the the quality of food I kind of discovered is because back in Brazil, yeah, I was living in the favela. But by the end of my like term. So let's just say, like, five months term, I, I started feeling like I'm starving. Like, I felt constant hunger every day because of my diet, because I couldn't afford to eat properly, probably. But, yeah, back, back here, uh, what I'm noticing, like, the quality of food I'm eating is, like, it's cheap, but it's also quality food, because, uh, yeah, back there, obviously, you could go to Zonosu supermarket in Rio, 
and buy some you know decent food organic and stuff but here is organic just by default you don't have to go to some special fancy kind of shops to do it supermarkets and stuff yeah and uh yeah especially when it comes to like dairy products cheese milk yogurts butter everything is like of a pretty high quality i would say yeah i mean yeah I, I, like back in brazil or in china and vietnam i tried some danish danish ice cream and stuff like that but it's, it's nothing compared to belarusian ice cream I don't know why it's not sold in Europe. It is sold in some countries like China, like Saudi Arabia, probably some other countries we got good relationships with. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, we don't have uh, good relationships with the so-called free world. And uh, that sucks, man, because they're lacking opportunities. Speaking of which, like uh, also when it comes to food, um, Back, I think uh, it was back in 2014 when Russia got struck with uh, sanctions for the first time for Crimea. And then since that time, we started uh, having a lot of um, like smuggling, probably. Yeah, so they smuggled uh, crabs and uh, oysters and stuff like that through Belarus, including olives and uh, spaghetti. So we got a lot of cheap stuff, uh, you know, made in Italy, like Italian spaghetti for $1, $1. One point five dollars and stuff, then olives. A can of olives gonna cost you approximately the same, and uh, yeah, a lot, a lot of cheap stuff coming from Europe, like from Spain, Italy. So here it is. Like politics is one thing, but you know, economic business opportunities is a whole another story. Yeah, it is what it is. Uh, another thing, like uh, so, so far I'm kind of enjoying the weather, the the cheapness of the country of my home country. And uh, you know, there's only like one thing that is kind of bothering me, but it's just, it looks kind of boring to, to stay here. But but then I'm kind of trying to ask me myself, well, why is it boring? So boring is that it's just secure. It's just like, you don't feel that, that some shit is going to happen to you. Like, you know, nobody's going to stab you. Nobody's going to steal your phone and, and stuff like that. Like you, you can freely walk after midnight in the street. I mean, yeah, of course, of course, possibly you, you can uh, encounter some drunk bunch of people, drunk lot, but uh, <laughs> hell, I mean, compared to what potentially could have happened to me in Brazil, I mean, it's nothing, it's, it's, it's nothing, yeah. Uh, although, like, when it comes to just the feeling of security and um, just the general feeling when you are outside in the street, uh, I don't feel particularly uh relaxed i would say yeah like people in brazil were, were pretty much relaxed because uh, you, you're like walking and you don't feel any tension like uh, people just look at you and for them you're just like a funny funny dressed gringo wearing some uh, foreign clothes and stuff so so that's it but but in here like there's a well whenever you whenever you pass some male or males a uh, group of males you feel some kind of friction like you, you know they're, they're looking at you aggressively but I, I guess that's just like the the cultural thing and uh yeah i mean considering the the number of wars this country went through i mean this land in general and uh, still still going on it's kind of uh yeah inevitable i would say yeah this this competitiveness this like aggressiveness this kind of male maleism and, and stuff yeah so it is what it is so we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna stay for a couple of more months, probably, and uh, yeah. Um, but the, uh, that's about it. 